It's May 27th, it's time for Water Weekly. Time for Water Weekly. That's it? Yep. Welcome to Watcher Weekly, presented by Breather, a show where we kick back, chat, and answer your guys' questions to the best of our ability. If you'd like, if you'd like to submit questions to future episodes, swing on by to We Are Watcher, We Are Watcher, We Are Watcher, YouTube.com slash Watcher, Facebook.com slash Watcher Entertainment. Whoa, wait, 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 pa- pa- Patreon.com slash Watcher. Well, no, you'll never forget again because we have a little ditty that people, uh, the fans have put together. That's right. So we'll share one of them. But fellas, before we move on, I gotta say, now that we're not playing D&D every week, boy, do I got a hankering for some fantasy. Oh yeah, some RPG action? What do you got? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Have you ever wanted to be the hero of your own fantasy? Thought I was, but I guess I'm not. That's a rhetorical question, it's not for you. Enter the epic world of Talaria, where dark elves meet the sacred order, and the banner lords are in an endless war with the undead hordes. Collect, equip, trade, and upgrade your team of heroes in order to start the journey of a lifetime. Raid Shadow Legends will take you to the world of dark fantasy and realism. Raid is actually free to play and is available for both mobile and PC. You could challenge yourself in ongoing tournaments right now, including the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, or the Notorious Dragon. Love it up, baby. And if you have the current patch, you could also play in the new arena tournament alongside other people. I love to hear it. Just grab your pals, compete in these tournaments, and uh, collect those shards. Let's open up some blue shards here, see who we get. Oh, first up is Bloodbraid, who looks like she could use some more armor, but she's a very good fighter, so I'm gonna hang on to her. Let's crack open another shard. Uh, this time we got, oh, Temptress. She's very strong, very rare. And finally, one last shard, because I'm addicted to shards. Let's see who we got here. Oh, Sentinel, level one, rare from the Barbarians. He's not too shabby. So, what are you waiting for? Oh, he's doing the voice. <laughs> I've, I've brought Stephanos back. <laughs> Go to the video description and click on the special link. Down there you will get 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, and 10 mystery shards, and a free awesome champion, God, I love shards. the Executioner. This package will be available for only 30 days, so click now. Get on it. Get those shards, baby. He, Shane's obsessed with the shards. That's all he talks about. I need the shards. Every, in our morning meetings, all he talks about is his I shards. I tell people, people call me Shard Midday. It's a nickname. Are you I've sure they're not a... saying Shard Midday? Yeah, I was Midday. about to say you no, want to get that D. I'm pretty hard. sure they call me Shard Midday. Shard Midday. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this week's episode. <laughs> Roll the clip. We are Watcher. We are Watcher. We are watcher, 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 we That's good. We have a very talented audience. We do. Viewers, watchers. Watcher is not a cult. It's some good harmonizing. There's some, uh, there's some like pleasant, like Sufjan Stevens vibes to that track. Yeah, just like a gentle flickering candlelight. Go follow them. Support their artistic endeavors. Chill zone. Chill zone. How y'all doing? I'm doing great. I've been eating a lot of pie because you guys got me a. A, a sweet birthday pie last week. What is your strategy when you receive Whoa. an entire pie for your birthday? Well, luckily I, I called up some people to swing by and then I lowered it down from my balcony like in Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm surprised you didn't eat the whole pie in one sitting. It's that big ass, uh, it's a Mexican chocolate pie from Pie Hole, which as we discussed in that episode of Weird Wonderful World is, I mean, one piece of that lasts me several days. It's dense. It's dense with two S's. It kind of looks like I'm taking a poop. 
I keep you. I put why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, I agree with like that. like you're looking at me from below. Are you on the floor? No, I'm on a chair, but then I'm there's a bed in front of me. Should we have a special event episode where we all sit on the floor next week? That'd be pretty crazy. You know what? Next week I'm going to sit on the floor and you guys are just going to have to deal with it. Well, you could do that. I'm going to sit here and kick back on this chair, baby. You're going to be the odd man out, man. The floor episode, the floor episode. I say we get a thousand thumbs up on the top comment to go sit and on the floor. And then it'll be the, the floor episode. I hated sitting on the floor as a kid though. What? I did too. Fun. I'm not flexible enough. Crisscross cross apple cross applesauce? applesauce. It hurt my hip flexors. Look, Even I'm as actually- a, as a child it hurt. I'm doing it right now. This is how I sit. Whoa. It's too much. That's right. It's too much. All right, so we have an announcement. Yes, we- uh, you know, we've been trucking over in the podcast zone. We have, uh, here's what you do going on. We've got Steven's Hidden Narratives. Uh, we have heard from a lot of people that they prefer sometimes to consume podcasts via video. So we did at some point implement the practice of recording our podcasts uh, with a video stream. And we're going to be mm -hmm. posting them over at youtube.com slash watcherpodcasts. We've got a here's what you do up there. By now, by this episode, there'll be a couple up there. Very fun. You can see, I, I hope I don't pick my nose or anything throughout any of those podcasts because we got very casual. Oh, very casual. Yeah, yeah. You can tell it's very apparent by Ryan's feet. You know, when you're chatting with your pals on the phone, kind of like back in the day, you lay back and you lay down on your bed without a care in the world. Sure. But if you yep. guys want to sit up tight and up front and center and good posture like a couple of dorks, then you guys go ahead and do that. I'm going to kick I'll, back he... and uh, be me. Either way, if you're listening to it via sitting or standing or toileting or showering or lying down on the ground, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash watch your podcast. And if you prefer the audio version, go over to bit.ly slash here's what you do. Here's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought we should read some comments because there were some funny ones that were responding to our last episode. If you recall from the episode, Shane laid out the Shane Madej Oreo challenge. I mean, look, I'm fine not even including the word Oreo and making it the Shane Madej challenge. Oh. I'm fine with this being my namesake. You want your namesake challenge to be people smelling their own shit to see if it smells like the food that it was before? Exactly right. We discussed this in the in the recent podcast episode, but several times in my life I've eaten upwards of a dozen Oreos and the resulting product smells like Oreos is the thing. Uh, and this comment says, this is from Danny Ya, tried the Oreo poop challenge, will updates once chat, dot, 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 update worked. It smelled like Oreos. Thank you, it. Shane, prove they it. said. Well, there's no way to prove that. So just corroborate it with somebody that you live with, somebody, yeah. your neighbor, ask That's them to come by, yeah. uh, and record their <laughs> yeah. account of it. Just trust me, yeah. this will be worth it. I think try harder. Next time when you uh, do this, take a vlog of it, and then bring in a roommate, a friend, maybe your parents, and if they could confirm that it smells like Oreos, then um, then I'll believe you. But until then, I can't believe you. This comes from Ladesi. This episode shouldn't be called Breaking Up With Friends. It should be called Drawer. And then it has three pronunciations of drawer in question marks. Oh, so it's drawer, drawer, or drawer. But was drawer. that me? Was that you? Drawer. I Ryan said did. drawer, and then Ryan was like, drawer? I think we drawer. just went into a little rabbit hole of how you pronounce that. Uh, yes, we do have an announcement. Well, not really an announcement. It's just the upcoming piece of content that we have this week. Spooky Small Talk. That's the pilot season finale. It's the fourth episode of Spooky Small Talk featuring none other than Marielle Scott, who is an actress. Uh, she also, for some reason, is my girlfriend. Speaking of unsolved. <laughs> <laughs> why? You're talking about oh, why, girlfriend. Oh, why, why is Marielle Scott why, with yeah, Ryan Vergara? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself now, that every morning. It remains. <laughs> yeah, that episode's a lot of fun. I uh, scare the hell out of her. She does not like being scared. Go figure. <laughs> what do you do? Like uh, hide with a, in the closet with a knife? Not with a oh knife. I'll God. just hide around the house every now and then and pop around corners and just. Scare I can't. The you can't be doing that. You can't. One I time I think... she was outside in the balcony and there's a window, and I just no. pressed my face against the window and I knocked on it. She turned around almost spilled her tea on herself. It was pretty funny. She almost spilled the tea? I'd like to say it was worth it. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, we're gonna do the Q&A section a little bit different this time, so we're just gonna answer questions from the community tab for now going forward, just because this is a YouTube show. Might as well focus on that. So let's start with a couple of those now. 
Let's go to one of the more upvoted questions. Uh, Turtle Jones says, day one of asking Shane, Ryan, and Steven, what salad dressing is their favorite? Day one, I already guess know the what? answer. Here's your answer. Do you, wait, Steven, do you have an answer? I already know your answer. No, you don't, I assure you. It's not ranch? Nope. Ryan, yours is not ranch? Mine is not, it's actually, <gasps> if Shane got, somehow was the same one as me, that would be crazy, because mine is well, like right. very specific. It's, it's kind of a toss up for me. Wouldn't you say it's a toss in? I'll say this, Caesar salad is one of my favorite salads and, and the dressing mm. by default is one of my all time faves. But lately, very recently, Green Goddess, just a, a, green a goddess. sprinkling of what green, is green goddess. goddess. I gotta Google this. It sounds gross. It's very green good. Goddess. It's Caesar-like, but it has a, a different kind of zing oh. to it. What? It, I've never heard of this. My problem with Green Goddess, and without ever even knowing what it is, just the name alone does not evoke tasty thoughts in my head. It's good. Uh, it's very good. Hear it out. Hear it out. It has listen mayonnaise, to, listen up. sour cream, chives, anchovy, tarragon, lemon juice, pepper, and I don't know what this ingredient is. Yeah, that does. Honestly, that description that sounds good. Sounds, sounds kind of gross, but it is good. It's that I think that sounds it's, amazing. Good. It's kind of it's kind of ranchy, kind of Caesar-y. Um, it sounds Caesar adjacent. Yeah. It's Caesar adjacent. It, that's a great way to describe it. So that's me. Caesar Caesar is the goat dressing for me as well. I love it's it. Incredible. It is. I, the one thing I don't know about Caesar is it varies wildly depending on where you're going. Yeah. Sometimes it has a little bit more of that actual fishy taste to it. And I I'm like, I'm not about that. Oh, I love um, that. I'm not about that. I'm into, I mean, I don't know if it's basic or not, but I do like the balsamic vinegar at the best. It, it, it's like having wine in your salad. It's great. It's very refreshing. It is pretty very good. Very refreshing. All right, uh, well, this <laughs> comes from <laughs> very clickable. Alma H. Uh, to be or not to be, that is the true question. But in all seriousness, my question is, what is the puppet professor's origin? How did you come up with having a puppet, its design, etc.? Um, his origin. Well, I, I, I don't know. It's a bit of a mystery. Perhaps we'll get into it in future episodes that we may or may not be working Does on. Does that mean he was adopted? I don't know. It's, look, Stephen. I. What, what kind of question is that? Should we have a, <laughs> a specific puppet Q and A at some point? Where he I have has... an idea. I have an idea. Okay. All right. We we do have data of some parts of the professor through puppet history. We also have a yeah. uh, crowdsourcing aggregate website called Wikipedia. Somebody yeah. should uh -huh. pull in all the, what they know about the puppet, the professor, and pull it into a Wikipedia page, and we can start assembling mm. all the different parts of this, this uh, character to understand its origin. Oh. But okay. we can't make a Wikipedia page because you can't make one about yourself. So somebody out there has to build the page for us. Maybe. It can just be about the show. Puppet history, and That's then there's, true. there's a there's true. a uh, paragraph about the origins His of origins. the professor. Yes, but do stay tuned for the end of this episode because I am gonna. It doesn't really hint at the origins of the professor, but I do give a very compelling vlog tour of of the puppet theater and its inner workings, so you can actually see what I see when I'm behind the theater. It's quite fascinating. Why are you behind the theater? Oh, I do, I like to hang out back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I stand there with little <laughs> bottles of of uh, Fiji water to hand to him while, while the uh, musical guests you're, are you're, performing. You're his, you're his entourage. I, I prepare his little handlers. bowls of M&Ms with all the brown ones picked out or whatever. Patreon, uh, this comes from Plant Friend. She says, if you were arrested, what would your friends assume you'd done? Right. Steven, I'm gonna, I would like to vote you start because you're the one I'm most curious about. <sighs> I don't know yet. I don't know. I haven't thought about this. Ryan, I thought of immediately, pooped in a mall. <laughs> pooped in a mall? Yeah, like, like on accident, maybe had a spicy chimichanga or something, you just pooped in, a, in the middle of a mall. Mm. Spicy chimichanga does sound good. <laughs> I could, be, I could be down for that. <laughs> Let's see, Steven, I'm not gonna lie, the first thing that pops in my head, I hate to say it, you're a serial killer. I repeatedly called the local authorities and told them to check it. <laughs> I in know this is a joke. Check this guy out. <laughs> I am not a serial killer by any means. I wouldn't peg Steven for a serial killer. I'd say he'd get arrested for like importing some sort of strange illegal meat, some sort of delicacy. Uh, Cause you know- Okay, okay, you know what? You guys got me, hold up. What do you got? That's. Yeah, is he gonna pull a body out of the wall? Uh, no, it's gonna be like a Slim Jim made out of like elephant meat or something. You're right. I am a serial killer. You're right. <laughs> You're right. All right. 
Just now that's watch me kill cereal. Some good old that's, fashioned here's your Ohio title right humor. <laughs> Stephen Lim admits he's a serial killer. That's the title of this watcher. That's true. <laughs> this would be the greatest piece of internet content of all time. Like if that just like for some reason, he just felt like, you know what? The jig is up. You guys got me. And he pulls up a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> a dead you know, body on screen. We should do. And we're just like, holy shit! Steven admits he's a serial killer. Steven, say it. I'm Steven Lim. <laughs> and I'm a serial killer. Right. What, what crime What crime would I do? Do you guys. Oh, right. I can't really imagine you doing much. Maybe other than like. Unless it was crazy, like some kind of white collar crime. Like you've been like like embezzlement of some sort. Yeah, um, sure. Or, if I didn't know you and I saw a, like a stock image of you, I would think that. I'm not smart enough with business to be able to do business crimes. I mean, the only thing that I could think of where you could maybe get loosely arrested would be if you were to insult somebody's UFO beliefs and you got oh, into a little spat with them and then they called the cops on you. You know what, I, I, real, I know what it is. I would think you were the first witness at a crime scene, like you you were the first person to come upon a body. I just hung out, took a selfie with it. You, you called it in, you said, I found a body, and you just sound very suspicious and they think you're the murderer. Repeatedly in Unsolved, you've said things when it comes to crime scenes where I'm like, this guy's going to jail. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Uh, we'll be answering more Patreon questions over on our bonus show, Watcher Weekly Plus over on Patreon. Swing over to patreon.com slash watcher for that. And now let us take you on a wonderful tour of the Puppet Theater. Roll the clip. Hello everybody. I'm here today to show you uh, how the Puppet Theater works. I've long teased this. Let me move this cat toy. Uh, so it's not in the frame. This was something I built last summer um, around this time of year, in fact. I, I believe it was in May. May, June, somewhere around there. So, uh, having flashbacks. So there are many, many pieces to this wonderful thing. Here's a large piece of it, flat. Here are more pieces. I don't know what this design is. I just sort of made fake constellations. We hadn't designed the Watcher logo when I was making this, but we knew there was probably gonna be some sort of eye element. So I put this spooky little eye at the top of the theater. So these are the sides of the theater. You can see this is all made out of foam core and plenty of tape. So really not professional. Curtain uh, with this wonderful rope pattern that I made, a lot of hot glue. It's kind of a miracle that this all ended up fitting together because I was really, Look at how beautiful that curtain is. It's lost sometimes in the Puppet History episodes, but it's a beautiful, beautiful curtain. This was one of the more expensive fabrics that I bought at Joanne Fabric last year. Uh, and this is the backdrop. The initial idea was to maybe have different backdrops that could fall down at different times throughout the story to change the background of what was behind the professor. But again, that was really sort of difficult to figure out. So I stuck with one. Let's try and set this up. So yes, as you can see, it is collapsible. Oh, look at this. You'll also notice with the way it's fit into the frame here is that I designed it so that it would perfectly match a video frame. It's 16 by nine ratio. It's a neat little nerdy thing. These come out. Also behind this, you can see, <laughs> look at the level of craftsmanship here. As the curtains are just sort of uh, taped in there. That's fine. So this goes, what's the best way to do this? So now this goes, no, this is on that side. Yes, okay, I'm recalling now. It's a fairly complex process. Just slides very easily. Hang on a second. Great, nailing it. Piece of shit, okay, perfect. Now this is gonna come up here and just nestle right on top via Velcro perfectly. Perfectly. Now we're gonna do the same over here. And this is strong Velcro, mind you. It's a little more sturdy when it's on a table. So there's a theater. As you can see, the proscenium is not fully filled out, but like the rest of the theater, it was meant to be sort of easily packaged and folded up and taken places. First we have these, pop right on to the sides. I painted all these by myself. This goes up here. Let's just get this kind of in the middle. Cool, great, love it. Now we've got ourselves a theater. I'm gonna turn it around now so you can see how the curtain mechanism works because uh, this is the other half of the fun. And now you'll get to see my view 
uh, when I'm actually uh, doing my puppet stuff. Very good. Okay, I feel like I'm missing something on here. Maybe, okay, so this is the roof, essentially, and you'll notice I put this sort of groove on the end because I have these, these platforms up top. It essentially slides in, and then these just stop it from going down too far. The reason that this exists is so that the curtain can actually smoothly slide in and out. But let me try and get this in. Uh-huh, cool. Oh, this might have been the trick. This feels correct. And then I'm just gonna pull it forward. And now it's nestled in there perfectly. When the curtain goes down, there's really nothing preventing it from falling all the way down, which is why I have this little hook up here. And I could take that little ball and peg, put it there, curtain stays. And then when it was time to have a little fun, pull the back here, pull it up, falls on the lip. Incredible. But really, for someone who's never built a little theater like this, pretty good. So yeah, here's the uh, back view. You can see, I would usually kind of toss this up. Uh, there would be a curtain hanging here. The professor would be out here. My elbow got very tired and um, bruised. Not something you can easily anticipate. My elbow would be under here. Shit. There's babies outside. See, that's, and you can. Pull it back up. I got pretty good at it when we were shooting and I've clearly forgotten how to do it smoothly. One last feature, sorry. One last feature that I'd like to show off if I'm doing this correctly. Uh, okay, well that's not working. Here we go. Nope, don't wanna, come on. <laughs> Maybe this one's broken. There we go, okay functioning lights in the back. So it sort of, it already lights the professor and I would just sort of keep this remote here when it was question time. Very easy to switch to question time. Look at that. So I could change it up. Time for a song, great. We can do that. Little puppet in there. He's uh, being suspended by my hydro flask right now. All the lights are on. I have this light bar in the front that just adds a little flourish. This is actually darker than it was on set, but you can see it adds just a nice glow to the theater. Then I can take you in the back to show you precisely what my view looks like when we're shooting puppet history. It looks like that. This looks like the poster for the Professor biopic. Just him facing the world. Very exciting. So there's our tour of the theater. You can see what a gargantuan undertaking this was. Uh, in, in reality, it only took me about a weekend to make this, but it was a very, very hot, exhausting, sweaty weekend with a lot of uh, scissors and rubber cement. Well, that's been a tour of the Puppet Theater. Thanks for watching. Bye. Well, wasn't that exciting to see? It's good stuff. I made that all myself. Uh, I think that does it for this week. Don't forget to watch Spooky Small Talk on Friday. It's a hell of an episode. And don't forget to subscribe to the new channel, youtube.com slash right. watcher podcast. We're gonna get that, that baby up to a million subscribers. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Stay safe and smart and wild and fun and just have a good time this week. Yeah. I don't know, well, bye everybody. Kill some bowls of cereal. Adios.